So in today's video, we're going to talk about replacing the black bus bar and this bus bar because there's only four connections on here. And we're going to be going to the 12 post bus bar. And I just put this red tape on there. Um, it's just red electrical tape and black electrical tape. It doesn't come like that. But one of the things I wanted to tell you was when I opened the box up, all these were pretty much loose. Before you throw the box away, um, came packed like this. Uh, before you throw the box away, there was on the sticky part of this, there was some um, of the nuts and washer and lock washers in there. They came loose, so make sure that you have all of your, every one of these has a bolt a washer and a lock washer on them. Make sure you have them before you throw your packing and your box away, uh, just so you don't throw those away. So we're gonna replace this. This is the black one. This is the red one. We're going to end up mounting this one right there. And then the red one will be mounting right there. So we'll still have them in the same spot so we don't have to worry about readjusting our wires or anything like that. Um, and then we'll be putting our two new uh, inverters, the same as this, EG4 3000 watt off-grid. We'll be mounting them in both of those. We also bought new breakers, our DC uh, amp, a dim rail breakers, those are high amps for the grow watt, the 12 kilowatt grow watt we have. Uh, those were only 150 amp DC solar panel PV input. So the amps were really high on that. And this over here is a 500, up to 500 volt DC solar panel input. So you can put a lot of your arrays just straight series, 10, 12 panels. Uh, and you don't have to worry about so much parallel with that. One of those, just to get 6,000 watts, I had 250 watt panels. I had to put uh, four in series and then parallel the rest. So I had 24 panels, so I had six sets of four in series, and then all six of those were in parallel. So it was really high amps. I mean, it was like um, eight times six. It was 40-some amps going through that wire. And this is 10-gauge PV wire, and that's only going to max 30, 35 amps. So it was exceeding the amps on the PV wire, I actually had to get, uh, this is actually, I had, I bought two sets. This is um, 500 foot spools of red and 500 of the black. And this is actually the 10 gauge, but I bought some eight gauge to be able to accommodate to go over 40 amps. So I'm kind of glad I don't have to mess with that anymore. It's, it, um, it was hard. You couldn't get the MC4 connector cap to go over it. It wasn't going to be waterproof because it wouldn't work with the components of the MC4 uh, connector. So I kind of had to take and remount this end here to be able to get it to fit. And then I couldn't use the, the guts of it to make it waterproof. So I didn't really like that. Um, but I did that in order to accommodate the higher amps coming in. So we'll be replacing those three with just two of these 20 amp uh, DC dim rail uh, breakers. And they easily accommodate the wire for that. Um, that is, that's like almost a quarter inch by quarter inch. <laughs> and I mean, it'll easily be able to receive the outside of this casing. <laughs> so the I paid only like $12.99 for these on Amazon. Uh, unfortunately, Signature Solar doesn't carry these. Uh, these were 
$9.99, I think it was, for both sets. And like I said, it didn't have the black or the red tape on it. I just did that just now. So right now, with these four in parallel, I have 25 amps input off of each one of those into my breaker panel, main breaker panel. And that's off grid. That's not touching my grid at all. Everything that I have is off grid. I don't have grid power connected in any way, shape, or form to any of the stuff. So 25 amps output, 3,000 watt output, and it's 50 amps of inrush. So with four of these, the output is 100 amps, but the inrush is 200 amps with four of them in parallel. When we go over here and we add our fifth and sixth one on the wall, we'll be able to go up to 150 amps output and 300 amp inrush. And that inrush is just for a few, not even, I don't even know, it's just kind of like a millisecond to get that to start up. But this is a 200 amp uh, panel on that breaker panel. So uh, really don't need that high of an end rush, but it's there if you need it. The other thing is, is on this one right here, my East Array, during the time of the year between uh, maybe 11, 11, 30 and one, I will lose this array because of the shade of the two-story house on the east side. And if I have these other two um, 3000 watt EG4 inverters here, those both of those arrays are on the west side of the house. So those will come online around 11.30, 12 o'clock, um, not maybe even earlier than that. But when I lose this 4,640 watts, which I do get 3,000 watts of output on that, I'll pick up over here a 3,000 watt and a 3,200 watt inverter kicking online when it's in full sun, and I'll actually pick up more power towards the in the afternoon for the end of the day. So I'll be able to run my uh, main air conditioners longer and keep my batteries charged up longer. And then at nighttime, we don't use the four ton downstairs. We just use the upstairs, three and a half ton to air condition the house. And that's just run on these battery banks, nine batteries, and I have no problem running that. It actually keeps the downstairs um, completely cool at like 78, 79 degrees without running any air conditioner downstairs. Because we're actually air conditioning the downstairs to about 68 degrees during the day. Um, so it's kind of thermal cool downstairs. And as soon as the sun goes down, you're not generating any more heat on the outside wall or the windows. So it actually stays cold overnight really well. So anyways, we're just going to take, to get ready to accept two more of these, we're going to have to take and mount the black one right there. We've got the room for it. And the red one will go right there. And we'll install those. And then once we have that done, we'll be able to take and put those two other ones when we receive those to be able to get that all set up. Now on this array over here, um, like I said, one's a 3000 watt mono panel and the other one is four, eight, or four 400 watt mono panels and four 400 watt poly, or I'm sorry, mono bifacial. Um, I think it's only like a 50 to, 50 watt swing on the bifacials. So it's like 380 to 430 or something like that. So we'll be hooking those up, those eight panels, 400 watt panels will be going in a string of series, going straight into the inverter, well, straight into the um, breaker, then in the inverter. And then we have six, um, 250 watt mono panels on one shed and six on another. 
So we'll either run those at six and series and six and series and parallel them, or we'll run them six and series straight into the other six and series and then straight into the inverter. Now on those 250 watt mono panels on the shed, I believe those are around 37 to 37.5 uh, DC volts. So you can go up to 500 on this. So uh, at 10 of them at 37 and a half volts, that's 370 volts. And then you add another two, that's another 75. So you're well below the 500 volt threshold for the input on these. And I think they're right around seven or eight amps on each one of those. So we'll stay underneath, even if we put six in series and then parallel that with the other six in series, we would still be around 15, 16 amps, which is well below the 18 to 20 amps that you want to input into this. So that'd be pretty easy. So we're not going to touch this at all. This has enough to receive the other two. Uh, we can probably put two on this side and two on that side. Uh, so we'll be putting two more over here. Uh, we'll have the, the other one there and the other one there. We'll come down with a black wire and we'll run it into there. And then we'll come down with a red wire and run it into the side of here and then down on the bus bar. So we'll be able to shut down our battery on all those. Those four will shut down these four inverters for the solar and then the two breakers that will be over here for the PV going up to the two breakers up here. We'll be able to shut down the solar panels for that. So really easy, but looking forward to getting these installed. Um, I really love these things. They're only like 18 pounds. Those grow watts were 186 pounds for the 12 kilowatt low frequency, and they were 109 pounds for the 6 kilowatt. And now I have a hernia, a second hernia, um, so I can't really mess with those heavy ones. Uh, I don't want to tear it anymore, so I'm going to be playing with these for a while. And these are great. They're totally had no issues with these for the last six months that I've had them installed. They just run flawlessly and they're not very loud. Uh, I don't even notice when the three and a half ton and four ton air conditioner kicks on, even the 12.7 ton pool heater, I do not really notice um, that it started up except that the fans on these all increase the fan speed and the noise goes up a little bit. But there's no flickering. I have these, I have this light and this light and even that light um, is on the solar and I don't even notice a flicker. Now when I had the 12 kilowatt on the wall, I noticed a flicker when the three and a half ton kicked on or the four ton or the 12.7 ton pool heater. So these, I really like these and highly recommend them. They're very easy to work with. You got two battery wires, two solar wires, two output wires, and your ground, and that's it. So you really um, pretty much plug and play almost. And then you have your, your communication cables that come with them. And those communication cables are included. I ended up uh, using a white one just for people to be able to trace it in my video and a black one so that you could see. And it kind of, on four of them, it goes full loop. Now, when I go to do the other two on there, I'll have to rewire it a little bit. Because if you look on this, the white one goes from here into this one. And then out of that one goes down into this one. So we go from that inverter to that inverter to this inverter. And then this black one comes up here, goes into here. And then out of there, it goes back into this first one. So it's a loop. I mean, it's just pretty much goes like that. It's real easy. So when I go to connect the other one, like I said, 
So when I get the other inverters, they'll give me six feet of black and six feet of the red of the uh, battery cable. They'll give me the breakers for these. And the only thing I had to do is buy the breakers for the solar. And it'd be real easy to connect up. Anyways, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. We're going to be working on that today. And sometime after the first of the new year, we're probably going to install those. Other two. So please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We'll put links in the description for this product. And hope you have a truly wonderful and extremely blessed 2024. And going on 2025, hope you have a truly blessed 2025. See you in the next video.